My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to the West Coast edition of Kramerica. Other people make friends. I'm just trying to make some money. My job is not just to entertain, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CNBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. Can good news put you to sleep? Oh, there were so many positive developments today that it was almost like the market's eyes glazed over. And while the Dow gained 91 points, the S&P only climbed 0.19%. NASDAQ barely advanced at all, gaining a paltry 0.08%. So what's going on? Where do I even start? This morning kicked off with an interview that we did with Larry Kudlow, the president's chief economic advisor, and my former Kudlow and Kramer co-host here on CBC. He explained that the agreement signed with China is a lot more far-reaching than most people realize. It actually forces China to change the way it runs its economy in order to create a more level playing field. Larry also said something that no one else seems to be talking about. It's kind of bugging me. He said our relationship with China is quite cordial. Because the Chinese government recognizes that the United States doesn't want to disengage with them. While this deal was being negotiated, the big fault line in the White House was between those who don't believe China can ever be redeemed. So why not just keep hitting them with tariffs forever to wreck their economy? And those who think that China can be a good trading partner if they're willing to play by the rules. Call it the engage versus disengage camp, and the engage camp just won. From the stock market's perspective, that is fabulous news. Financial and tech companies will get a lot more business. Many U.S. tech companies have shied away from China because of the ridiculously lax intellectual property laws and promotion of intellectual property theft. Barry Cullo believes that can change. Our financial companies have been shut out of that lucrative Chinese market. Now the government says that will change. I think that means MasterCard or Visa might be able to issue credit cards over there, maybe both, and the banks like J.P. Morgan or Goldman Sachs will be able to have their own franchises free of nettlesome partners. That's got me musing on the possibility that China will allow Apple to offer its credit card that we have here and only here there, too. The whole credit card industry has been praying to get into China to no avail until now. Numbers could go up gigantically, which means the group likely has more room to run. Are the $200 billion uh, worth of purchases uh, for real? Well, Larry thinks so. For both teams, for both sides, this is a pro-growth deal. In fact, we think it's going to add to the growth of our economy by at least a half a percentage point in 2020. Now, Reuters is saying with a story that came out mid-afternoon that it's a lot more complicated than that. They point out China still has tariffs on the goods they talk about purchasing, and they haven't rolled them back yet. Now, in fact, when the story broke, it caused the market to reverse hard, even as I think that the story doesn't even matter. If the Chinese government wants to purchase this stuff, they're going to purchase it. It's going to happen. And given that President Trump won't roll back our tariffs until they place these orders, well, I, I would think they have a pretty strong incentive to keep their word, don't you? The stocks that rallied hard, stocks like the transports, tell me the market agrees with me. The transports are my barometer, and they finally broke out to a new high. You know I like Union Pacific, but have you ever considered buying FedEx, FedEx over this? Now, they spent fortunes building out their Chinese business, and it had just gotten to the point where it could be immensely profitable before the trade war pretty much shut them down. Now FedEx can make a comeback, and its stock was actually down today, uh, down a lot, uh, off almost three bucks. I'll have more about that particular segment of the economy later on the show. Stay tuned. Many have doubted the prospects of companies that have spent fortunes building out liquefied natural gas trains to export liquefied natural gas, LNG. But Semper Energy, Dominion, Chenier, and Tellurian will be rewarded with a huge customer base that can easily get hooked on our our nation's plentiful natural gas. Hey, we're the lowest cost producer in the world. Maybe the single digit Tellurian, uh, the one that was started by Sharif Suki. Maybe it's worth speculating on. Don't forget, we make more than just planes and heavy machinery. The Chinese can buy medical instruments like the ones I heard about here at the J.P. Morgan Healthcare Conference. And let's remember that IBM, Emerson, 3M, Honeywell, nice move today. United Technologies all have tons of merchandise to sell. Needless to say, Apple's a winner, too. Oh, and in case you need more companies, the president named dozens of them in his press conference today, which at times felt like he was reading a list of the Fortune 500 and asked them why they haven't thanked them. All the while, he kept the Chinese standing there waiting. 
I don't even know which one to hit. It was all very good for stocks, but the market's collective eyes glazed over. Some of that's because a lot of the trade deals were already baked in, but there was plenty of new stuff here that got completely ignored or that the media chose to ignore because, well, it's hate them or like them was positive for them. I, I'm speaking of Trump there. And that's hardly the only positive story today. Consider the banks. Today, we got some incredible numbers from Goldman Sachs and Bank of America. But these quarters were treated as a real snooze fest because you already got great results from J.P. Morgan and Citigroup the other day. I kept going over the numbers saying, what am I missing? What am I missing? The answer, nothing. There was just ennui. Nothing but ennui. We saw the same delayed reaction to the stock of United Health, UNH, Kramer fave. Company reported around 6 a.m. Okay, I'm watching. And I, mean, I, I got my requisite 45 minutes of sleep, and the stock sunk almost immediately when they reported. I'm thinking, oh, man, maybe I'm just too tired. Not. When the conference call got rolling, the stock levitated because the numbers components were extraordinary. It finished up eight bucks. Hey, moron. Oh, I'm sorry, from Jimmy Chill. Hey, people who mistakenly sold that stock when it was down. Well, that was ill-advised. Now, I think these moves may not be done. This is day one of a much better than expected trade deal. And Larry says there'll be more deals because the Chinese need them. They need to get rid of those tariffs. Since Larry came in to this job, you know, he's been right a lot more. He's been wrong. Now, it wasn't all positive. Two high-flying stocks finally came down. Tesla and Beyond me. The latter had been up 55% this year. I mean, this year was like, it's like 45 minutes old. Now, that's how much sleep I had. I'm a believer in both of these stocks, but enough already. Parabolic moves are unsustainable. And the only true disappointment did kind of shock me. I got this one wrong. Target effectively blew up, showing a dramatic deceleration some same-store sales growth for the holidays. See how Brian Cornell called the plus one and change increase a disappointment true, with the miss concentrated in electronics, toys, and home. I think these below expectations categories can actually be explained not by a weak consumer, uh-uh, no way, not to listen to Bank of America and J.P. Morgan, but by encroachment of Amazon and the Uber Kramer fave Costco, coupled with the dramatic sales of the Apple iPhone uh, the 11, which I keep telling you is a game changer, but you won't listen to me. Yes, it could be so big that it's pulling sales away from other big ticket items. That's the way it works. We don't all have, hey, my cost, I can't even reveal how much it costs. To me, though, here's the issue. Even with the averages at all-time highs, the stocks are the actual winners that the president of the United States singled out at his incredible press conference, I mean, kind of, candidly, a little bit nutty, simply refused to run up dramatically in spite of market-moving information. And I think that's all about ennui. He put out a buy list today. I'm not kidding. I was thinking when he was doing it, buy, 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 buy. Look, this is not a political show. On man money, I'm in favor of anything that results in higher stock prices. And that is exactly what this trade deal does. Don't let anyone else tell you differently. They don't understand stocks and they don't understand companies. The bottom line, if the stocks of any of these companies with new access to China get hit, I think you need to be a buyer in the weakness. I'm just hoping the market's general sense of ennui gives you that opportunity. I feel like taking some calls. I think we should go to Julia in New York. Julia. Hey, Jim. I love your show. Thank you, Um, Julia. I was calling about Target. I bought it uh, this past spring based on your watch stock recommendation. Right. And it's been doing great until today. And I was wondering if you, uh, what, should I take a profit? Is the market well, overreacting? Okay, Julie, here's what typically happens. When you have a stock down this much, it means that uh, sellers were still trying to sell it even at the bell. I think the sellers will come back. I don't think they're done. I do think that the company is a great company. I think they missed the mark with the merchandise, but I'm not giving up on Brian Cornell. That would be mistaken. I think the market yawned too much on positive news today. I mean, we have moves that I think are not done. On oh, man, tonight. You know the phrase, don't take it personally? I'll tell you why maybe you should. Then in a world of fast fashion that ends up in a landfill, can Stitch Fix leave a lasting impression? I got a chance to sit down with a CEO at the company's San Francisco headquarters. And after the close, yep. XBO Logistics, remember I teased that with the FedEx thing, announced it would explore strategic alternatives. I've got the CEO fresh off the news. Nobody else does. That's called an exclusive. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? 
Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.